Hello one and all. This is the third episode of macroeconomic series and in today's video I will be talking about long run economic growth. Now let's dive into it. As I have mentioned in my previous video on gross domestic product about the concept of GDP which is generally a parameter to evaluate growth rate in any economy. Well, I have attached the link in the description to the video on GDP or you can go to the channel to see the video. The growth rate of real GDP is actually calculated annually. Here we are concerned with long run growth. So let's see how the annual growth rate of real GDP is related to the long run growth rate. To understand this relationship, economists generally use a rule called rule of 70 which mathematically looks like this. The number of years for real GDP to double is equal to the ratio of 70 and annual growth rate of real GDP. For example, if the annual growth rate of any country is 2%, it takes 35 years for that country to double its GDP. As we see that countries like Argentina were quite wealthy at the beginning of the 20th century and plummeted then. Whereas the countries like India and China who were poorer at that period are now quite superior to many countries in the world. To know about this, we need to get the concept of the sources of long-run economic growth. The most crucial part is productivity or labor productivity, which is nothing but output per worker. If the productivity of workers in any economy increases constantly, it will surely help in the long-run economic growth of any country. Countries like the US, Western Europe, Eastern Asia are richer and advanced as the productivity of their workers increased dramatically. There are mainly three different factors to help the growth in productivity. They are increase in physical capital. The workers now are equipped with good machinery and better office spaces to work as compared to their counterparts a century ago. Similarly, increase in human capital. The workers are now quite educated and trained than in the past that increases their productivity. Changes in technology. The most important driver of productivity growth is the progress made in the technology that improves the technical means of production of goods and services. Now we are clear that productivity is higher when workers are equipped with physical capital, human capital and better technology. These effects can be put into numbers using a term called aggregate production function, which shows how productivity depends on the quantities of physical capital per worker, human capital per worker and also the state of technology. The aggregate production function can be represented using various empirical formulas. We need to know a fact that aggregate production function exhibits diminishing returns to physical capital, that is, when the amount of human capital per worker and the state of technology are held constant, each successive increase in the amount of physical capital per worker leads to a small increase in productivity. A hypothetical example of how the real GDP changes as the physical capital changes with the other two factors remaining constant is as shown in the graph. When the physical capital increases from $20,000 to $40,000, the real GDP increases from $30,000 to $50,000, whereas the further increment of capital to $60,000 increases the real GDP only by $10,000. Let's explore an analogy for this. The production of wheat increases significantly if a farmer plowing on hand is given with a tractor. But if a farmer with already a tractor is provided with another advanced tractor, the production increases but not that significant as in the former case. Now, what if only human capital is kept constant and the previous graph is analyzed in two different technological eras? We can see in this graph that the real GDP increases in different scale for the same change in physical capital for a different state of technology. We need to know that the supply of natural resources is also crucial in maintaining economic growth. For example, the Gulf countries with huge oil reserves have a high real GDP per capita as they sell oils to run their economy. I hope everyone knows that different countries have different economic growth rates. Why is it so? What could be the factors for that difference? Well, the first one is savings and investment spending. A country that has a higher domestic saving or savings of foreign capital can invest the money to grow the economy and hence the GDP increases. Also, the education provided by any country to its citizens also has a huge impact on determining the growth in its economy. The richer countries have a huge investment in education for their people. 
Similarly, a country's spending on research and development matters a lot because technological progress is achieved only through R&D. That is why a government should provide subsidies to infrastructure, R&D, education, maintain a good financial system, protect property rights. Also, good governments and political stability are inevitable to see the long-run economic growth of any country. In the present context, everyone must address the issue of environmental degradation and a decrease in the supply of natural resources for sustainable economic growth. Okay, this is all about long-run economic growth. Please comment in the comment section for any queries and do not forget to subscribe economics portal for more informative content. Have a good time and stay blessed.